Hey there, MJ traders and investors. It's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth for an MJ Sector review. Today's a review for Friday, May 21st. And boy, am I ever happy it's Friday. Let me know in the comments below. If you're excited for the long weekend, if you're in Canada, you know that it's a holiday on Monday. U.S. markets will remain open, uh, but the Canadian equity markets will be closed. So just keep that in mind going into next week. But definitely excited for the long weekend. I'll still be doing videos on Monday, though, just might, maybe not for private members in the morning. We'll see. I haven't decided yet, but I'll uh, keep everybody posted. And we'll look at some news and events. Going to focus on the stock of the day today as Planet 13. So before we jump in, make sure to smash the like and subscribe to the channel. We'll go over some news and events. And as I said, the stock of the day that we'll be focusing on will be Planet 13. Going to over this new uh, news that just came out about their new uh, MJ infused beverages, Haha ha Soda. And then we'll look at the chart and do some analysis on what we can expect to see into the next few weeks and months. So Planet 13 launches MJ infused Ha Ha sodas, sodas in Nevada. So they have here, as you can see, the different types and flavors, old school root beer, guzzle it grape and ludicrous lemon lime. So they look pretty good. It's 10 milligram option and 180 calories. Can't really blow up the nutrition facts enough, but looks like it's going to have quite a bit of a of sugar content in it based on, on uh, the calorie intake. But these look super good. Can't wait to, I'm actually planning a trip to Colorado and Las Vegas as soon as this, you know, <laughs> once this craziness ends. I think we're on the end of it now. Let me know in the comments below if you think this is the third and final wave. It's the third time at Charm. I think it's going to be the end uh, in the next, you know, three to six months. We could see everything uh, return to normalcy and can't wait to go on a trip. We're going to be doing tons of product sampling and product review videos. So, um, just imagine the amount of products we'd be able to hit up in Colorado and in the Nevada markets. So looking forward to going to Las Vegas and Colorado as soon as I am able. So we'll take a look at the chart here in a moment, but these look fantastic. If anybody's tried these, let me know. Um, I mean, obviously they're just launching them, so they're, they're new. But if you do get the chance to try them and you're watching this video and you've tried them, let me know in the comments below what you think because I can't wait to try them. They look pretty good. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the sugar, sugary drinks, but they definitely look appealing. And I can I can bet that a lot of consumers will be appealing and compelled to the uh, appeal to and compelled to the 10 milligram. So key chairman plans to file revised federal MJ legalization bill in house as early as next week. So I found this interesting. We could and I've said this for a while now that it's likely going to be some sort of news catalyst that's going to you know, excite the the whole market, both in Can in the Canadian market and the U.S. MJ markets, uh, because this, the charts all look very similar. They all have a lack of weekly resistance, and we just can't get anything going. Even with SPY rebounding, we're not seeing much activity in the U.S. and the CAD MJ space. So we'll be keeping an eye on this, but we could see some potential FOMO and hype into next week if this gains any traction. Also, Canadian MJ sales increased 65% in March to 298 million. And we should be expecting April sales data on June 23rd. So Coios Beverage Corp, another name, KBEV, that we're extremely bullish on in our group. I've pointed out a few times now on the channel. So they had news after market close yesterday, Fit Soda to be carried in over 100 southwestern U.S. locations of a national convenience chain with over 3,800 stores, and that will be beginning in June of this year. So next month, and the stock was up huge today. It was up over 40% at one point. I called this out back when the stock was at about five cents, and a lot of people in our group took that trade. And then we added again when we confirmed the daily uptrend around seven, eight cents, and then it went all the way up to 19 cents, and most of the people in our group took profit after I had said that I was taking profit and again, this isn't financial advice, it's just for entertainment and educational purposes only. But now we're starting to add that position back and started to buy it again at 10 cents, got it all the way down to 7 cents. We had strong support at 7 cents and we got as high as 12 cents today. So congrats to the bulls there, up about 40%. It's a long-term hold for me, so I'll be holding that one for the long term. And I'll put some timestamps in the description below as well. But going to move on to the Planet 13 chart before we go into the entire space. I do want to spend some time on this. So we have our support down at 699, which is a recent low. We still haven't changed the daily trend though, but we did have a nice move there off of the low. You're looking at about a 17% move. We do have earnings coming up on the 27th. 
So that will be a week, just under a week, six days away. So Thursday next week. And as we know, they generally have a fairly decent reaction, but we had a big miss on EPS last time. It was negative, not, not a huge miss, I guess. I, mean, I guess they were estimate, yeah, they were estimating positive EPS and it came in negative 0.03. So we'll see. Let me know in the comments below if you're planning to hold this through earnings. Personally, I don't own any. I'll probably wait until after earnings before I purchase any. But we are forming tons of room here and tons of space to form a higher low compared to 699. We're still in a daily downtrend, so anything under 885 will give us a daily lower high. But that was a nice trade coming off of $7 support. We had support at 716, so we saw a flush of that and ultimately held 7. And again, we had a lack of resistance from that low all the way up to 885, so about 26% on the daily. But just keep in mind that we are still in a daily downtrend. So when we do top out here, could even set up for a daily inside bar on, on uh, I guess it'd be Tuesday. It won't be trading on Monday as it's on the CSE. But, you know, we'll be keeping an eye on it. But it, it's essentially just going to come down to whether or not we lose the low or whether or not we break the high of today. So if we lose the low, and we haven't done that now for the last six trading days. So if we lose the low of the previous daily candle, daily consolidation will be underway. We'll be looking for a higher low compared to 699. Then if we can break resistance up at 818, that would confirm a daily uptrend. But if we do see a further push from here, it's likely going to result in an equilibrium and we can expect a decent pullback if we continue. But personally, I would expect a higher low at some point here before earnings next week. If you are looking to enter, maybe you are patient waiting for that daily higher low and attempt a daily trend change into that earnings as well. But taking a look at the weekly chart, we are right on EMA 12, it's sitting at 8.01. We closed above it though at 8.05 here on the weekly. So that is bullish in my opinion after holding EMA 26 on this pullback and we're not seeing a whole lot of downside action here. And you could draw out a bit of a pennant here. So we did break that, break out of that bearish and we'll just use the real candle bodies here as well. Just the best rough idea. So we are coming back. So we lost that close beneath it, but we are closing back above. So we did see some bear follow through out of that, but we're bouncing back and not seeing a whole lot of follow through to the downside. So bears aren't really proven much and bulls finally stepping in here. And on the monthly time frame. We're just looking for a monthly higher low, just like most names. But after that monster run from down at 99 cents, I mean, you're right. We ran over 10 X. So it's down to see, you know, 10, 20, 30, even 40% pullback. We've yet to test the EMA 12 on the monthly as well down at 628. So that's a potential area. If we do see further consolidation, just keep an eye on that. On the weekly time frame, we did close. Looks like we closed above the 10 week moving average. Sitting, no, we didn't. It's sitting at 811. So we close at 805. And the stochastic and the MACD are still in bearish territory. We haven't had a bull cross yet. So it's not uh, it's not looking too great here. Closing below that 10 week moving average. We could see more downside next week, at least a daily higher low, in my opinion. And taking a look at the weekly moving average, we do have the weekly 50 moving average down at 588. So that could come into play as well if we do see further weakness. That'll be a level to keep an eye on. And on the daily moving averages, we topped out right at the 50 day moving average. So confirming resistance sitting at 813. And we have the 100 day moving average at 803, which we closed above. So we'll be looking to get over that 50 day moving average next week at 813. But again, likely gonna anticipate a higher low somewhere around the 730s area leading up into earnings. And on the weekly VWAP, we held the weekly VWAP as well, which was bullish in my opinion. And that's sitting down at 719. So congrats to the PLTH bulls who entered a few days ago. So that's been a nice bounce from the lows. I said about 17%. So take a look at the rest of the US sector. Again, I'll put some timestamps in the description below, but uh, taking a look at the bull and bear list in the US, so we had GRWG, FLGC, and TerraSend led the decline today. On the bull list, we have KBEV, PLTH, and TAUG. 
So I do want to bring up KBEV real quick. Look at that volume. And I, I mentioned this in my video and to private members. I even did a support trend line here that we held and then we broke out of this pennant bullish and we had a lack of resistance all the way up to about 18, 19 cents. So from that strong, solid support there at seven cents, you're looking at about 150% move. So a name that I'm extremely bullish on. I've tried their products. They're fantastic. They also have Lion's Mane coffee. I can't wait till this comes to Canada. They stopped shipping to Canada. I used to buy it by the hundreds of, you know, the can by the hundreds, but um, the duty ended up being too much that I think they just stopped shipping to Canada altogether. And we'll see, we'll see whether or not we have distribution in Canada at some point, but they do have a deal with Walmart in the States and really excited to try TAT products as well. Uh, the CBD hemp like cigarettes. Can't wait till they have Canadian distribution as well. But taking a look at TAT, looking to change the daily trend. Not much of a pullback here though, so I wouldn't consider that enough of a higher low to change the trend. So just be cautious here, looking for a higher low compared to 312. And then we'll look to change that daily trend to be confident that our weekly bottoms are set at this point. So moving on to the Canadian space, Hexo. Close at 484, we're down to five, or sorry, 584 USD, down to 581 here after hours. And we did break the high of yesterday, but not by much. Actually, no, we didn't, we double topped. 587 is the level to get over. But if we can get over 587, we've got a lack of resistance on the daily all the way up till 753, so about a 27% move. And it's all about support here at 564 and 502 being the biggie. This is a big support. So taking a look at the bull and bear list, NSP, ZENA, and P PCLO, SNDL, and N led the decline, and Cron as well. But not that much red on the day today. T God, High Tide, and VFF led the bull list. And T God's been strong. Another name that we called out in the group saying that we hit 29 cents. I said we had strong support at 28 after that double bottom. And I know a few people in our group got filled around 30 cents. And they took some profit today. It was up to 20%. So congrats to those who took that T-God trade off of that bottom fishing support. So going to end it there. Happy Friday. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. And for those for my fellow Canadians, hope you have a great long weekend. And we will see you next week after market close. Take care, everybody. And we'll see you on the next one.